Board Game Network. This is James here. I'm going to be explaining to you how to play this game called Broom Service. And this was the Kinner Spiel du Jour, or I've been corrected on how to say that. Kinner Spiel du Jour 2015 winner. Um, so that's the German Connoisseur's Game of the Year. So that's a high quality game there. I've got this set up for. Uh, three players. It plays two to five players. The complexity is considered a, a three out of ten, so not too complex. And it plays in about 45 to 75 minutes. You play the roles of witches, druids, and gatherers, producing potions and delivering them throughout the magical realm via your broom service. Okay, so I've got this set up for three players. What we do is we we look for 10 cards that have uh, different colors, so there's five different sets of those. You take your 10, you take a set of three different color potions, you take, if you're the first player, you're going to take one wand, if you're the last player, you're going to take one wand, everybody in between gets two wands, and you set out uh, these clouds, there's 24 clouds, you randomly mix them up and play them out. This board actually has a front and a back side, so you're looking for the castle with the red banners on it, um, and that's the side you're going to use, and then put out 18 clouds randomly. You have your color of pawns, and so you're going to start your two pawns in the two castles. You are going to start your scoring token on the 10 space, and the point for starting on the 10 space is you can lose victory points, so that gives you uh, room to go backwards. You are going to take the event cards. There are ten of those. You shuffle them up and uh, take seven of the of the ten. Remove three from the game. Flip one up and that's the first round. This happens in seven rounds and so this is your timer here. Once you've gotten through seven rounds then the game's going to be over. And if you're playing less than five players you're going to take one of the unused colors Put it out here, and these are called uh, these are the bewitched cards, and the number of cards you flip up plus the number of players is going to equal five. So I'm flipping up two because there's three players. So if you have five players, you're not going to have a bewitched set of cards. So uh, that's all of the setup there. Um, Looking at the reference card here, what we're going to do is we're going to flip over the new event card at the beginning of the round, which we've already done. We're going to reveal new bewitched cards here at the beginning of the round. I've already done that, but each round you're going to flip two more on top. If this ever runs out, you reshuffle all the cards and start over. Um, each player chooses four roll cards. You're going to take from your ten cards you're going to pick four of them to play each round. So you've got druids and gatherers and witches in here. So I'm just going to pick four of them. Now you want to shy away from playing bewitched cards as your roll cards because you get minus three victory points if you do that. So you don't normally want to do that. That's like another player playing these cards over here uh, and so that's your competition with fewer players. That plays as kind of your competition. Uh, with more players, you don't need as much competition. That's why there's fewer bewitched cards. So once you've decided what your four roll cards are, you, uh, whoever the first player is, says, I am the brave, and then whatever it is, the valley druid. I am the brave valley druid. Or I am the Cowardly valley, valley, valley Druid. Each card has a brave thing and a cowardly thing. The cowardly thing happens immediately. If you play it, you immediately do what it says to do. If you're the brave, if you say you're brave, you actually get a better benefit. But if somebody else has that in their four roll cards that they've chosen, then they get to play it after you. So. Let's say, you know, each player has now drawn four cards that they've got in their hand. And I say, I'm the Brave Valley Druid. And so red then goes, 
And if red does not have the valley druid, they simply say next. And then yellow might say next. And so I get to do what the, the brave valley druid tells me I can do. However, if I play a brave valley druid and red has wants to play a cowardly valley druid, they got the valley druid in their hand, they want to play it as cowardly, they say I have a cowardly valley druid and they go ahead and play it and take the benefit from that. If however they want to play and then it goes to yellow and the yellow can then choose to do a brave valley druid if they have one in their in their four cards and if they do if they play the brave valley druid then they get to do it and I don't get anything out of this. When you play brave on any of the cards if somebody else has one after you and they play it as brave they get to do it and you don't get anything. So it's kind of a gamble. Uh, the cowardly one you always get to do but it's not as good. Uh, actions are always optional on here. You can play this card but then not take the action on it. Uh, once the first player is out of cards then it goes clockwise to the next player if that happens. Um, the played card goes face up in front of everybody so once it's been played then the next card comes out and that one gets played and so these all stay face up in front of people. Now if I played the Brave Valley Druid and Yellow ended up playing the Brave Valley Druid or, or the, or the uh, Cowardly, they don't happen to have that in their hands, but if they did they'd play it out there and so everybody's played cards would go out whether they're brave or they're cowardly and so you could see how many cards are left in everybody's hands. You can see what they've played and you cannot hold back. If I do a, a Valley Druid you can't hold back and not do it. You have to do it in the round in the order that the other players are doing it. So you may actually get things played out of the order that you want them played in. Um, you get minus three victory points so you move back three victory points if you play a bewitched card so you always need to watch what's over there in the bewitched cards when you choose your initial four cards and the end of the round happens when all cards have been played. So if I've got the herb, the herb gatherer here, if I say I'm the brave herb gatherer and then it goes to the next player and whoever is the last brave herb gatherer in this case that would be the player who starts the next card. So I started the game but then let's say red played a brave herb gatherer out and then yellow said next then then uh, red would take the next play and play the next card down to start. Once we've gone through all four here then once again we flip up and we check the event card. Some event cards happen at the beginning of the round, some happen in the middle, some happen at the end. This says all players lose victory points for their two pawns. Uh, the number of victory points depends on where the pawns are at the end of the round. This thing actually gives you a minus one if you're in a, a forest, minus three if you're in a valley, minus two if you're in the hills. So you definitely want to, when you're moving around here, uh, try to move away from the, especially the valley or the hills that give you big negatives. Uh, maybe you want to see if you can get to the mountains this round. So once you're done with the round, then you're going to flip over a new round card or an event card and then make sure you read it to see when it applies. It may happen at the beginning, it may happen in the middle. You then choose your four cards again for the second round. Uh, the first player to play is the person who was the last brave player of the previous round. So you need to remember who the last player who started the last round, who was the last person who was brave, and then that would be the start 
person for the next round or if there was nobody that played a brave card, if everybody did cowardly, then it's the first player again, whoever played first last time. So once all of this is done, then you do game end scoring and game end scoring is on the back here. Um, here's resources here. If you have a set of all four resources, so you've got one wand and one of three colors of potions, you get four points. If you've only got three of the four, you get two points. Anything else is not counted. Lightning is just counted by the quantity of them. If you've got one lightning, it's worth three. Two lightnings worth six. Three is 10, and then so on up here on your lightning. Amulets is in the variation, um, so we won't cover that. Now, let me go over the different roles. Gatherers in your cards, you'll have a bunch of, let me just show you that we have, here's a witch, here's a witch, here's a witch, here's a witch, here's a druid, here's a f the weather fairy, which is kind of an exception to everything. Here's the gatherer, here's a druid, a gatherer, and a gatherer. So you got three gatherers, four witches, two druids and each of them have an area on the board where their expertise is. So you got an herb gatherer, a root gatherer, a fruit gatherer. And gatherers simply give you resources. So when you play a, a fruit gatherer, here it says, I am the brave fruit gatherer, produce two purple potions and one potion of my choice. So just from the supply out here, you're going to grab two plus one of your choice if you're the brave one and you're the last brave one. If you say, I'm a cowardly fruit gatherer, immediately take one purple potion. So that's the fruit gatherer. The root gatherer, uh, if you're brave, gives you an orange potion and two magic wands. If you are cowardly, you get one orange or one magic wand. And the same thing with the herb. So that's gatherers. That's if you want to get more resources, you, you play a gatherer out. Witches allow you to move. So that's how you move around the board. It allows you to move to an adjacent space. And so here's my four witches. This says, I am the brave mountain witch and fly to an adjacent cloud-free mountain and to deliver a magic potion. So wherever I'm at, if I am, what color am I? I'm blue. I can fly to an adjacent mountain. So here's mountains. So I could fly here. And remember it said, to a cloud free. You can never fly into the clouds. It's um, probably run into a plane or something. I'm not sure. Uh, so there can't be clouds in the space that you're flying into with a witch. Um, and then you get to deliver a magic potion there. And you'll see these castles here. That's the color of potion they want. So this has got an orange top on it. It wants an orange potion. It's also round, which makes a difference. And once you deliver a potion there, uh, you get these victory points here, the four victory points, whatever is in the, the shield there beside the, beside the tower. The cowardly one says immediately fly to an adjacent cloud-free mountain. So you don't get to deliver the potion, so you don't get the victory points. So all of these are like that. Hills go to a hill, the hill witch. The prairie goes to the prairie, the forest goes to the forest. So that's how you go to the, f the four different kinds of territories around. And the, uh, the brave ones let you deliver potions also. Now if the tower is round, you can only deliver one potion there. Once it's been delivered, it's been occupied so nobody else can deliver a potion there. And when you deliver the potion, it just sits there on the board. So it shows that nobody else can use it. And this castle is actually adjacent to the mountains and the forest. So no matter which one you're in, you can deliver to that one. It's right on the border. Uh, this one is on the border of the plains and the forest and the mountains. And then some of them are right in the middle, like this one can only be delivered to if you're in the plains. And the square ones actually don't become occupied they're usually worth maybe less points or not as good but when you deliver there that one is a green 
uh, has a green top on it. So when you deliver there, you just discard your potion to the supply. And so that one can continue to be delivered to over and over and over again by different players. Um, so the green one also gets victory points just like the round one, the, the uh, square one gets victory points just like the round one does. Sometimes the round one might have a wand by it and so you get the victory points plus you get to take a wand out of the supply. And then the druids, there's only two druids, the druids let you deliver, but you can't move like a witch. Says, I am the valley druid, I'm the brave valley druid, deliver a magic potion to a tower in a prairie or a forest. So this one has two different things it can deliver to, uh, the prairie or the forest, deliver to a tower there and get three extra victory points. So the druid actually gives you more victory points than a witch, but the druid doesn't let you move. The peak one lets you deliver to a tower inside a hill or a mountain or adjacent to one of those. And then the plus three victory points also. The cowardly ones let you deliver, but you don't get the three victory points. Now clouds can't be moved onto, like I said, so the, what you do with a cloud is you remove, you move adjacent to a cloud, so whatever space is adjacent to a cloud, and then you play, you have to play the weather fairy. So this one has to be in your hand to play. And it says, I am the brave weather fairy and charm away an adjacent cloud with the necessary magic wands for plus three victory points. So you have to, there's a white star here, and it tells you how many wands you have to discard to get rid of that cloud. Uh, so the icon there shows you a wand, and then get rid of the cloud and a plus three victory points. If you're cowardly, you charm away the adjacent cloud with the wand, but you don't get the plus three victory points. And when you get rid of that cloud, you keep the cloud because the cloud is worth bonuses at the end, like I said here on the lightning. And the lightning, you count the lightning, not the number of clouds. So some of these have more than one lightning bolt on them. Okay, so that uh, is how this game works and you're going to just keep playing each round and you don't even have to count the rounds because once your event cards run out, then you'll know that's the last round. So there's all kinds of things in your, uh, your adventure cards here, your event cards here. Like this one says at the beginning of the round, so this would happen before you actually choose your cards. Each player chooses one to five rule cards and gains or loses corresponding number of victory points. So if you only pick one card instead of four, you get a 10 point bonus. But you can pick up to five cards and get a minus five victory point. Uh, Braveheart, the first player to play each roll card must be brave. The first player of the round gets a magic wand. Okay. Uh, Black Distillery, the players, players who play cowardly this round may choose to take any free resource instead of performing the action. So just a variety of things there in your event cards. There are also variants at the end that give you other clouds besides these clouds. And those play on the front or the back of the board. There is a back on here with purple banners. Uh, there's a, ver a variation with the hills. That's just on the back. There's variation with the mountains. That's just on the back. And there's a variation with the forest that's on the back that make those do other things. And you can combine those variants in any way you uh, please. So. You just simply keep track of your score going around the board and then at the end you're going to score your lightning and your resources that you have left and see who's got the most uh, points. And if there's a tie then you, the person with the most resources is the winner. That's how you play Broom Service. Uh, make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network and our how to plays, our unboxings, our specials, and uh, make sure you enter to win in whatever our latest contest is.